Good evening, family and friends. Before I continue my trip back to Oberon, then um, reload for Adelaide, and um, it was it was pretty good this afternoon or this evening. Actually, picked up some logs, you know, our normal log trucks, but we had the opportunity to actually pick up some logs. So I actually found that really fascinating. Hey, Pastor Ben, how are you, bro? Turn, hello darling, your eyes upon Jesus, look fully his wonderful face, and the things on will grow straightly dim in the light of His glory and grace. Oh, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Father God, which art in heaven, Lord, as we study a portion of your word this evening, I to invite the Holy Spirit to be with us, Lord, to educate, to teach us, Father God, so that we may learn a valuable lesson from our devotion tonight. Um, bless everyone that is watching, Lord, and may you continue to bless them and their beautiful families as well. Forgive us, Lord, for the many mistakes, for we ask all these things in your name, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So our short devotion for tonight, family, is actually found in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9, and it says, We can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. Kia ora family, cousin, welcome. And our subheading for tonight is the right steps. You know, God knows everything about you. He knows your future and doesn't want you to struggle to figure it out. If we can accept that God's plan is much better than ours, it will be easier to let Him help us take the right next steps. So, what is this verse really talking about here? We can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. You know, in life, there are many things that we would like to achieve. You know, perhaps a bigger car or a new house and, and whatever um, your heart desires. You know, but the verse is actually pointing out this evening. You know, we can only make our plans and hope for the best. But the Lord determines our steps. So let's look at men. It says here, Men have intelligence. They set goals and plan the way to achieve them. Irrational creatures cannot do this. They only react by instinct to stimulus. But God, the Creator, sovereignly manages the details of actions so that you are dependent on Him. Because He may bless the good man with a favorable outcome and turn the evil man's plans upside down. This proverb by 
by the man himself, King Solomon, is important. God rules your life. Man proposes, God disposes. Man freely devises, God powerfully directs. Man creatively plans, God masterfully dictates. God is the Lord. Your life and its plans are in God's hands. Many wander and wander through life wishing they knew God's will for them. But God's will is not a mystery. No, it's not. And much of the answer is actually found in Proverbs. And our first point out of three points tonight is the first one is commit. Commit your works to the Lord. And the verse to support that is found in Proverbs chapter 16, verses 3. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and He will establish your plans. So whatever things you would like to achieve in this life, you know, commit your plans to the Lord and let the Lord lead. You know, sometimes we want and want and want and want and want, but we don't really need it. You know, is it of value? Is it important that, that we get these items? Maybe, maybe not. Like sometimes it's, it's good not to spend so much time on unnecessary things. And I've, I've always shared with my friends, my work colleagues, you know, don't, don't overthink and don't cause yourself unnecessary stress. Think of what you would like to achieve today. Um, be real about it. If you want to achieve a couple of things right now today, then when you achieve it, then you tick it off. You know, you tick it off. Be real. Don't. Don't plan a week ahead and you want to achieve um, a week's plan right now. It doesn't work like that. You know, plan your day, spend time with the Lord in prayer, wake up, have, have your devotion, have your normal prayers, meditate on the word, and not only meditate on the word, learn to have the characteristics of Christ. You know, so when you wake up, when you leave your house, you will leave your house with a positive attitude. You will leave your house with the I can attitude. You will leave your house knowing that you have already invited the Lord to be with you throughout your day. So when you set your mind at the beginning, a positive mindset actually goes a long way. And when you have Lord God as the center of your lives, things will be real to you through the eyes of, of our Savior, Jesus Christ. So that's what I do. I don't over plan. So if I want to achieve something for work for today, for example, I, you know, um, I went up to Sydney and then from Sydney, I went up to Canberra and then Canberra, I went up to Tumut, you know, another three hours that way. And I've got to drive back to Oberon to my next destination, which is five hours. But before I continue my trip, you know, I've already made a commitment. I said, Lord, look, um, the devotion is more important to me than anything else. So I, so I put you first and make you the center of my life so that when I continue to drive, you know, the Lord will protect me. Why? Because I have devoted time to be in, the, in God's presence and also to share God's word with you tonight, right now. So our second Bible verse to support, support commit. See, when you make a commitment, stick to it. Don't just commit for a few days or for a week and then you give up. Like training, you know, some of my friends, they do Muay Thai training and um, boxing as well. Uh, my brother here, Dave, that just joined us, you know, he does Muay Thai training. And when you commit, it not only commit physically to, to the training, it also requires you to commit um, physically as well with the, um, the, the, the nutrition, which I'll show you quickly later on after this. The nutrition is actually important as well. So you will be able to have endurance um, when you're in a fight. You know, these little things, uh, uh, when you commit to it, then you will see results rather than just doing something and you don't see yourself through it. Which brings us to the second Bible verse. And it's found in Psalms chapter 37, verses 4 and 5. And it says, Take delight in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him. And 
He will do this. So it's important that when you make a commitment to whatever spiritually, mentally, and physically, that once you make a commitment, then you continue, not just for one day or for one week or for one month. It becomes a lifestyle. Little habits becomes a lifestyle of our food um, changing your the, the way you eat becomes a lifestyle after a week or two weeks then once you continue to commit to a healthier lifestyle for example or meditating on the word of God or spending a lot more time in the word of God and getting to learn uh, about Jesus a lot more for yourself then everything else will fall into place so the first point for tonight is commit and our second point for this night uh, for tonight is device, a way to achieve your desired godly objectives. And, our, and it, the verse to support that is found in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 1. And it says, To humans belong the plans of the heart, but from the Lord comes proper answer of the tongue. So it says, see, you know, sometimes we have our plans and when we don't commit them to the Lord and it doesn't go according to plan, then we have no one else to blame but yourselves. So when you, when you plan something and when you commit it, commit it to God and when it goes well, it's because you have, you have trusted the process. So when you trust the process and allow God to lead your lives, then you'll be successful according to to the will of God, which brings us to the second verse, Proverbs chapter 20, verse 18, and it says, plans are established by seeking advice. So if you wage war, obtain guidance. So, you know, sometimes in life, we think we know everything. And when we hit a brick wall, you know, we try and, and go through the brick wall or go through over the brick wall rather than having a plan B. And the plan B is as simple as this. Just ask the person who have experienced that journey. Just ask the person advice. Ask for advice. And don't think you know all the answers because you don't. And sometimes we need to come down from our high horses. You know, that prideful status. Come down. Ask someone for help. And ask for advice. That's what I've learned to do. You know, I think I know everything, but really I don't know everything. And our third point for tonight is believe. You know, you have, uh, when you believe that he will take care of the details, and that's found in the book of Psalms, chapter 37, verses 23. The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Welcome. Hey, Michael, how are you, bro? Cho cousin, welcome. Hey, Ngodu, welcome, sister. So the Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. So when you have a plan, allow God to, to lead in your life. And when you en encourage others to be on this, you know, on the same wavelength, and when you when you stuck or come to a brick wall, feel free to ask. You know, don't be embarrassed to ask, hey, look, I need help. Can you advise and help me accordingly? And then by trusting the process, and then you come out to the point, to point number three, when you believe that things will happen, they will happen according to the will of God. Eh? So when you come to prayer and you believe that your prayer, um, you, you believe in, in, in your request, the things that you ask God to give you or the things that you ask from him, um, he will grant them to you according to his will though. Not according to yours. Don't expect your prayers to be answered instantly because it doesn't always happen. So your faith and believe and continue to trust the process, then God will answer you according, according to his will. Eh? So family, these words are for you. The Lord gave you a heart, so follow your dreams and shoot for the stars. God gave you a mind, so think of how you might achieve your goals. Once you commit your goals to God and follow the rules, wisdom, and the Word of God, go for it. No matter what it is, simply submit it to God's will. Then God will answer your prayers according to His will. 
to trust the process. And when you are stuck, don't hesitate to ask. Don't be embarrassed to ask someone who has wisdom and knowledge or experience in that field. So may the blessings of the Lord be upon us as we continue to seek his word daily. Loving Father which art in heaven, we thank you Lord for this opportunity. We thank you Lord for this time that we can come and share your word with families and friends and pastors Lord who are online. Uh, we are grateful, Lord, for the opportunity. We are grateful, Lord, for this time. Father God, as we, um, you know, come to the end of another light, night, Lord, may you bless the, the pastors who are present here, the pastors' wives who are here as well. And may you continue to lead them, Father God, as they continue to preach, to teach um, your people, Lord, uh, within their churches, within the community, and globally as well. Be with all the ministers and, uh, and pastors, Lord, as they do their best, Lord, to to preach your word to, to the world, um, to the community, and whoever they come encounter with. We pray the Lord for the world leaders as well, Lord, as they try their very best to find um, a cure for the coronavirus. Uh, we pray the Lord for um, for just every people in general, Lord, you know, those who are suffering from, from, from their sicknesses, Father God. And may you continue to touch and to heal them from their sicknesses. Lord, I just want to say, I'll say a, a special prayer for my niece, Nat, um, James Smith, Lord, who are, you know, who was broken down and, and and isolated, Father God. And may you continue to give her the strength, Father God, for her son. And uh, we know, Father God, in this life, um, you know, we have our ups and downs, Father God. But we just want to dedicate our my, my grandnephew to you before your throne, Father God. And may you continue to heal him and touch his life so that he may be re reunited with his family. Um, be with the, the families and friends, Lord, who are online. May you bless their families as well, Lord, as they continue to do whatever they can, Father God, to hasten your coming. We love you, Lord. We can't wait to see you. And please forgive us from the many mistakes, for we ask all these things in your name. Amen. So before I quickly jump out, family and friends, thank you for quickly joining me. And before I jump out, I just want to quickly show you what I eat on the road. And in here are goodies. <laughs> And here are some goodies that I've just quickly washed up so I don't spend too much time on it. And, um, hello, Alex. Hey, big brother, Odell. So we have um, um, tomatoes, broccoli, cauliflower, um, grapes. Um, just cut off some capsicums as well. And um, I'll just be adding you know, some, some healthy stuff, eh? Because on the road, you don't want to eat too heavy. You don't want to eat half a chicken or uh, you know, a whole chicken. So it's always good to be healthy. Add a little bit to that. It's already been, been washed already. Get that away. And in this um, mixed um, bag as well, it's got um, Simply Veggies. And it's got like celery, spring onions, um, yeah, the works, grated carrots, grated carrots, onions, the works, eh? And it's got coriander, coriander and parsley, which is good for you. And what I normally do as well, just add a bit of nuts in it as well. Add a bit of nuts for the taste, you know, because the body needs omega-3. So all these vitamins, all these goodies that's going into, into there as such, was actually good for you. Then what I like to add is some salmon. I like to add some salmon to it, eh? Put a generous amount. You know, it's for two meals. So put a generous amount in. Hmm. Because the body needs omega-3 daily, so if you're having omega-3 omega deficiency, I would recommend flaxseed oil. Because I'm a huge believer in you are what you eat. So nice and light, nice and healthy, tasty. Here it is right here, flaxseed oil, which is high in omega-3. 
So I normally just pour a generous amount in it. Generous amount. Not the, generous amount, not the whole bottle. <laughs> okay. And I have a piece of get on a pasta junior. Avocado, yes. You know, you are what you eat, so you choose what you want to eat. Um, so this is me. I'm just sharing my journey with you. I'm not expecting everyone to, to, to do this, but I'm just quickly sharing my journey with you. And I like to add, before I jump out for a quick session, I like to add, which I've added last night, um, just a little bit hot chili flakes to it. Just a little bit, don't go crazy, because you don't want to waste the food if you go too crazy. And also, a sprinkle of turmeric powder. A sprinkle, eh? not the whole bottle. And before I jump out, I, I really like red chili, eh? You know, the chili is good for, for um, fat metabolism. It's good for your digestive system. And the list keeps on going and going and going. And apparently, it's actually good for your immune system so if your immune system is not a hundred percent perhaps i recommend chili you can actually see it online um the the benefits of of eating chili eh? yeah so it was actually a really interesting afternoon Picked up logs on the truck and wow, I was just fascinated. I was just like a little kid, you know, the Tonka toys, where they just load up the truck with little with, with logs, which just fill up to the to the roof. And there you go, voila! Thank you, God, for the food I eat. Amen. Let's try it out. Eh? Let's see if it's a bit of avocado, capsicum, salmon, broccoli. Oh, absolutely delicious, eh? So you are what you eat. All the goodies in here. Avocado, cabbages, red cabbage, onions, the work, celeries, parsleys, everything. And a sprinkle of hot chili. Because it's actually good for you. So before I start the truck again, <laughs> you just just mixed up some feed tonight, Becky. We've got the works: salmon, broccoli, cauliflower, chili, everything. The works: celeries, capsicums, tomatoes. Uh, Broccoli, cauliflower, tomatoes, everything, chili, hot chili, and then, oh, I've actually added a bit of mushroom in it, and also salmon, eh? So there's actually enough here for two meals, and avocado, with a touch of the flaxseed oil I've, I've already showed you. So before I continue, I'm just going to jump out for a quick session. Let's go. So you choose to do, I mean, do you, and this is me doing me on the side of the road. Skipping, I've always liked skipping. So I've already done 15, 20 minutes earlier on. So let's do a little bit before I continue. It only gets, it gets easier after this.
this is stop theory. Jump in frog squats. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Just for the burn, frog squat's good for you. It's the thighs, calf muscles, glutes, just the legs in general, eh? Whoo! I think the food's calling me. I like to do a bit of core muscle as well. Core. So that's a bit of my journey, family. That's just a little bit of my journey. So may the blessings of the Lord be upon each one of you. Thank you for joining us for the devotion, nutrition, and a bit of exercise. Take care. God bless. Love you all. And good night.